Welcome to this week's edition of Pit Stop. I'm Jakob van der Merwe and joined by Charles Bosch. We're speaking about this mystery bucky from Stellantis the, um, that's going to be assembled in South Africa in the, in the next coming years. And I say mystery because it hasn't been officially confirmed. There's been a lot of assumptions made. There's been a lot of rumors and a, a big debate, um, especially filled recently with the news of the Fiat Strada that uh, there could be some African connections and Mideast and whatever. Stellantis did come out and say on the record, it won't be the Strada, but also, again, not that it won't ever be the Strada. Um, when they do manufacture the Strada in, in, in right hand drive from 2026, it, it could be a case that it could be assembled here. But what transpired in the last week is that now the owner seems to be moving back to the land track, which many originally thought will be almost the obvious one, because it's the only Bucky in the land, if you disregard, obviously, the Jeep Gladiator. It's the only Bucky in, in the local Stellantis uh, stable. Um, but also, Shol, you picked up that they haven't pertinently confirmed that this is the one. What happened was... And this is what a lot of, um, I won't mention names, but at least a couple of publications got suckered into believing that it was the land track. But when we scrutinized the statement that was provided by Stellantis, it said the land track is being earmarked for the fa for um, local assembly in 2026. Um, the 2025, the factory is expected to open. But um, 2026, it's being earmarked in uh, complete knockdown or CKD format. So earmarked does not set in stone. It has been confirmed. It's just been looked into. We were, as you mentioned, um, one, a colleague did say that he he received um, word from Stellantis that it was going to be the Persia land track, but it's not. And then this... Has completely opened the door to the strata, as you mentioned. But in that um, statement as well, um, it's this current generation is uh, left-hand drive only, and it will be going to um, the Middle East as well as um, certain sub-Saharan African markets. But in the statement also released, um, the very the the mentioned African markets were also left-hand drive, and then the follow-up statement said next generation. Um, as you as you pointed out, so it's really we don't know what's going to happen anymore. There's another theory that maybe both could then be built from 2026, but for now that's open to speculation. Yeah, the, the word <coughs> earmarked, of course, if you want to going to take every rugby player that's earmarked for the Springboks and that never makes the Springbok team, uh, then you're going to uh, leave yourself a big conundrum there. So yes, uh, should we say carefully chosen words by Salantis? Very. Um, yeah, obviously the timing, that opens us up for the big debate now because they never said that they're going to start b building them or, or assembling those kits this year, maybe not even next year. It looked like more likely towards 2025. Yes. And if there is a strata that's going to be right-hand drive and it's going to be assembled by 2026, it could be that it's the strata that's being assembled there by the end of 2025 for rollout in 2026. Well the, announcement, well, the official announcement that they made was said that there's going to be a one-ton bucky. But you never know. So one-ton would obviously classify it as the land track end of story. Um, but you never know. They could eventually change their minds and then decide, okay, well, let's decide on something that's more half-ton, something that's going to, for a fear of a lack of a better description, bring in the cash eventually. And with the departure of the Nissan NP200 in 2024 next year, um, the Strata will then, in theory, will be the only half ton. As we all know, that's where um, the the big demand lies because not everybody necessarily wants a full ton Bucky. And the Strata has the Strata was previously sold as a half ton, so it has a in inverted commas a vested reputation in the country because the, everybody knows the Strata name. Um, the land track is a little bit more obscure in that regard. Um, it is not selling that well. Um, if memory says we correctly, less than 300 units have been sold in this year alone. So to rather, to have change your mind, um, we spoke about this a while ago, what vehicle might Stellantis 
decide to build. They've got a raft of um, buckies to choose from. Um, it might make sense to rather bring the Strata instead of the land track, but for now, this one ton bucky remains. But a change of mind could happen, or both. We'll have to wait and see. Another little thing that kind of <coughs> leaves op- leaves itself open to debate is the fact that the land track we all know, and that's normally generally the rule of thumb, is there needs to be local demand for a product before they build it locally and they do that investment locally. So the thing is now, uh, the land track, there has not been local demand for it. There was probably, they had their stock shortages, shortages sorry, but with the uh, numbers they've been rolling out since launch, what was that, end of 2020, beginning of 2021, yep. I don't think, I- even conversations with the top brass at Stellantis recently, I asked them, what about the stronger engine? Will that make a difference? And even they said, we can't on a global scale demand or ask for more stock or a, uh, more of the bigger derivative if we can't even get the numbers up on the lower one. So obviously a lot needs to happen for this land track to be the land track they're assembling there. Absolutely. And they're also talking of um, mass um if I can remember correctly, it's a thousand jobs. I think this plant opening out in the Kucha um, SEZ, no longer IDZ, SEZ will create. And they're talking of intense um, localization. But as you mentioned, it is there's no, sadly, there's no real demand. And that's why we were speculating a while ago, maybe take a flyer and introduce, I don't know, one of their RAM products or something in the in the stable rather than opting for for the land track. The Strata, on the other hand, there's probably, as I mentioned, there could be, it's the other um, side of the coin because there's no longer a half ton. That could well elicit a change. But if there's no demand, then why why introduce something, spend a fortune on the factory and then introduce something that, yeah, will probably bring the price down as we see, as we saw what happened with the Nissan Navara. Pricing was brought down. It gave us an opportunity to introduce more derivatives. So in that regard, it that's probably the, the way they were looking at, um, bringing the costs down, upping localization, bring more models. But it's a whole point of demand. And will uh, producing the land track locally increase demand for it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, just very <coughs> importantly, the half tonner, although it was once a booming segment in South Africa with the Strada, the Bantam, the, the Corsa, the GM, I mean, all of them, even even Proton had the arena. Yeah. We we had so, I mean, <coughs> taking back to the days of the Nissan, or the Datsun 1500, the Nissan 1400, for all of those, but a, a lot of the big boys nowadays, they are basically on record saying, we are not touching the half tonne market. We don't think we can justify the numbers to bring money in. Rather, the, it's almost like uh, they've said, or it's been proven that the recipe in commercial use, go for a more base one-tonner single mm. cap. Basically the thing. But just quickly before we wrap up, should should Stellantis not take the Strada or the, the Land Trek? Just quickly, what are the other bucky options they can roll out? You mentioned the Ram. So, yeah, we've got the Ram Rampage, um, in which is a South America only one. However, there is a apparent second derivative, a more traditional. The, the Rampage is a um, unibody. Um, there is a more traditional body on frame bucky, Toyota Hilux for uh, Amarok, uh, for Ranger Rival, Isuzu D Max, that's reportedly being considered. Called the, it will revive the Ram Dakota, but Ram is staying very tight lipped at the moment on that. Then we've got um, the Fiat Titano, which is a rebadged version of the Land Track that's going to be coming out probably um, next year. We've got um, the Jeep Gladiator, as we mentioned. Um, and then we've got um, the Fiat Toro, which is a step up above the the Strada, which is a very angular um, looking thing. So um, very good looking actually as well. So that is um, basically the the whole of what um, uh, still is. I'm just trying to f- go through my memory bank, trying to figure out what else there is. But um, you also have to remember, talking about half tons, the Strata is technically not a half ton. It can take more than 500 kilograms. So that's another um, thing to to remember. So that is basically um, what Stellantis has. So it's a, quite a selection. 
that they um, have to choose from. But we will wait and see. Great. Uh, yeah, as soon as we obviously hear more from Stellantis, more news down the line, we will keep you up to date. And uh, hopefully soon we can confirm and not just uh, something that's been earmarked, but something that's been actually signed and rubber stamped and sealed and approved. That was uh, all from us for this week's Pit Stop. I'm Jakob van der Merwe. I was joined by Shalbosch. Thank you for listening.